Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, the Supreme Litigant. I'd like to welcome all of y'all back to Smart Low TV. If you haven't already, y'all know the routine. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and uh, pound that like button while I give y'all a few seconds to do that. All right, so let's get back to the topic of this video. This will be part two of It's All About the Facts because it's all about the facts. And I'm going to keep telling y'all that because that's how I won my case. I know how to apply the law to the facts of the case. And I know that if it's relevant, I talk about it. If it's not relevant, I don't talk about it. <clears throat> so um, the, the facts of the case, y'all, they will always determine if the officer acted reasonably or unreasonably. In other words, if the officer acted lawfully or unlawfully, they are gonna always determine that. The facts of the case will always determine if you have um, alleged a valid cause of action against the police officer. They gonna always determine that. Always, 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 always. And uh, what y'all need to understand are there are principles uh, to pleading, you know, to pleading your case. And uh, one principle um, is you don't need to say any, don't say any more than what is necessary to prove your point. And whatever you state, you need to state it in a, you need to state it in a factual manner. And then you can make conclusions because if you don't do that, they're going to say that it's conclusory. If you don't have facts to support your, uh, your your legal conclusions, okay. Here's one right here: an affidavit. An affidavit supporting the issuance of uh, of an arrest warrant must contain more than merely conclusory statements by the officer. This is a Texas case. You can go and read that if you want to. I'm gonna stop where it says facts, but anyway, it must contain sufficient facts supporting the officer's personal knowledge or belief of the alleged facts. Facts. The facts are your. The facts are the ingredients. The elements. Let me rephrase that. They're the prerequisite elements. The prerequisite ingredients that they need. That you. That you know. That the police officer needs to. Uh, you know to allege a valid um, criminal charge against you, or, and it's what you need to allege a valid cause of action against the police officer when you when you know when you're suing them in federal court or state court. It's the same thing, y'all. The same exact thing. So when you um, if you don't do that, they are going to file a motion to dismiss for failure to state a claim for which relief can be granted. They're going to file a rule 12B6. If you sue that police officer and you just allege conclusions without facts in support of those conclusions, that is what they're going to do. That is what you need to do when they do this shit in criminal, you know, in, in whether it be circuit court, district court or municipal court. When these police officers procreate these so-called criminal charges against you and they don't have facts in support of those the conclusions, you know, to haul you off in court, then you simply file a motion to dismiss and you say this complaint is legally insufficient as a matter of law because it is devoid of the prerequisite elements of the offense. It's vague, it's conclusory, and it doesn't afford me due process because there are no facts to support these legal conclusions of the police officers. If they allowed this type of stuff to happen, people will be there will be tons of people in jail for stuff that they don't even know why. You know, for reasons they don't they don't even know why they're in jail because the police officer never told them. It's not in it's not in the um the complaint, you know, the criminal complaint, and it's not in the warrant of arrest. You know what I'm saying? There will be a thousands of people. You you will be going to jail for stuff you didn't even do, and you don't know why. There will be millions of people just locked up for no reason and they don't well they don't know why is what i'm trying to say and you can't do that that's a violation of due process on the civil side and the criminal side you have to allege the facts that you are basing your reason for hauling these police officers into court and for and they have to do the same thing to you <clears throat> here's one in alabama uh, let's see. There it is. They say, nevertheless, the affidavit here, like the one at issue in what is that? Uh, Crittenden versus State, 
uh, is wholly insufficient to support a warrant of arrest because it is purely conclusory. It is nothing more than the affiant's conclusion that the individual named therein perpetrated the described offense without setting out any factual basis for such conclusion. That's a violation of due process. You cannot do that. They can't do that, y'all. They violate due process when they do that. And they do that all the time. So anytime you get a, I don't care if it's a traffic ticket, uh, they charging your person with resisting arrest, failure to obey, disorderly conduct, whatever, you just go straight to the facts section of that complaint. The facts, what they need to contain, who, what, when, where, how, why, what did I do? How did I do it? You know what I'm saying? They have, to t they have to tell a story, and this story has to lead up to uh, the con uh, lead up to the officer's reasonable conclusion that she or he has probable cause and does believe that they have probable cause to arrest you for whatever they are alleging that you did. It's got to be, man. Here's a Texas case. In green, the insufficient conclusory affidavit rendered the uh, arrest warrant invalid because it was not issued in response to probable cause. Just go. Y'all go and read these cases, man. Go read these cases. I'm telling y'all. They have to have facts. They have to. Conclusory statements without more are not enough to find an arrest warrant. Hold on, let me see. Are not enough to find an arrest warrant lacked probable cause. They need facts. They need facts, y'all. They need the ingredients, the prerequisite elements of the offense. And you need the prerequisite elements or the ingredients or the facts of the cause of action for which you are suing. If I'm going to keep saying that until y'all get it. Here's one right here. We have stated that a bear that a bare bones affidavit is insufficient to establish probable cause. And this is the case right here. If you wanted to go and read that, that's the case. The affidavits must supply the magistrate with sufficient information to determine that probable cause exists. So you got to do that. It's got to do that. Here's another one. This is a federal case right here. Holy conclusory statements are insufficient to establish probable cause. Let me show you all what they mean by bare bones. Bare bone indictments refers to an indictment that cites only the language of the statute allegedly violated. Now, tell y'all, then I show y'all that in the other video. And it's all about the facts. The first one that I did yesterday, when I told y'all that they will cut, they go to the statute and they copy and paste it into the uh, the factual section of the complaint. That's what they do because they idiots. They don't know what they're doing and they are not qualified to be law enforcement officers because they don't know law about nine out of ten of them don't know law they don't know what the hell they are doing these are these ain't nothing but but the king's henchmen that's that's all it is just the king's henchmen let's go down some more so i want y'all to see this stuff and the, his, this is an Ohio case, just to let y'all know. The reason why I'm doing this, and I didn't I didn't just go to like some Alabama cases, uh, you know, uh, state, court, state court cases or federal cases, is because I wanted y'all to see that this principle applies everywhere. This is a principle. It applies everywhere. An affidavit that contains conclusory statements and nothing more specific is merely bare bones and insufficient to support a magistrate's finding of probable cause. There's the case right there. That's the case right there. It's all about the facts. It's all about the facts. A bare bone affidavit is insufficient to establish probable cause. There it is again. This is Ohio. An affidavit that includes only wholly conclusory statements fail, fails to meet the probable cause requirement. They got to have facts, y'all. It must be factual.
Here's another one. A bare bones affidavit is insufficient to establish probable cause. A bare bone affidavit contains wholly conclusory statements which lacks the which lack the facts and circumstances from which a magistrate can independently determine probable cause. Give me one second, y'all. I'll be right back. All right. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's see. Let's go back down some more. Um, what is this? This looks like uh, looks like Minnesota. Yeah, this is a uh, United States federal uh, United States District Court case in uh, Minnesota, 2015. I'm gonna read this. I'm I'm not gonna read the whole cases to y'all. I'm just gonna read y'all the case citations. Y'all can go and read these cases for yourself. A supporting affidavit that consists of bare bone conclusions or conclusory allegations cannot support a finding of probable cause. Whether probable cause exists depends upon the totality of the circumstances. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go down some more. This is in Arkansas. Bare bone. Was that? No. Bare conclusory statements are insufficient to support a finding of probable cause. There's the case right there. Let's go down some more. This is Kentucky, if I'm not mistaken, right here. 2017 conclusory allegations in an affidavit are insufficient to establish probable cause. And there's the case citation right there that y'all should go and read, especially if you're in Kentucky. A conclusory statement of probable cause or bare bones affidavit is insufficient. Foundation for a search warrant. And they cite the Supreme Court case right here for the United States or whatever. It, these are principles, y'all. These are principles of law, and they apply everywhere. Everywhere. Here's one from Tennessee. As noted above, the conclusory allegations of an affiant are not sufficient to sustain a warrant. What is this? Tennessee? Yeah. It's the same thing that I just read. This is uh, Pennsylvania. This is a United States District Court case from 2021. Uh, it's a federal court case. A warrant based on an affidavit with wholly conclusory statements that lack a basis for finding probable cause would not survive. You all see this, man? It's always about the facts. Go read cases to show y'all what I'm talking about. It is always about the facts of the case it's always i don't care if they say if it's a criminal case or a civil case it is always about the facts of the case and who better to argue the facts of your case whether it be a criminal case or a civil case than you just think Learn how to apply the law to the facts of your case and start going in that courtroom and showing these people that they can't just run over you and do whatever the hell that they want to do, because that's what they think they can do. They think they can just do whatever the hell they want to do whenever the hell they want to do it. And they can't because they are public servants and you are sovereign. Anyway, that will be the end of this video. Hopefully this helped you all understand, you know understand i, I kind of wanted to go over some cases but they they, they were going to be extremely long cases and i didn't want to confuse anybody so i just try to keep it simple but go and read these cases because that is the law go read these cases hope that helped y'all understand how serious the facts of the case are the supreme litigate is out peace <laughs>